Hello and welcome to Bay College's online lectures for college algebra. In this video we're going to look at section 1.6 which deals with absolute value equations and absolute value e inequalities. Um, first thing we want to define is what is an absolute value? An absolute value is asking for a distance and what we know about distances is they're always positive. If someone said travel negative five miles you'd be asking someone else for directions. Distance is a positive value. So absolute value is what they ask is how far from zero. So if we look at this equation here, we have the absolute value of 5 minus x equals 1. Well, what that means is the distance from zero is equal to 1. Well, when we talk about our number line, there are uh, a distance to the right and a distance to the left. So there are two values. So what this is saying is 5 minus x is this distance from 0 and 5 minus x is this distance from 0. So we're talking about the absolute value. So what we have to do when we deal with absolute values is we have to write two equations. The first equation is essentially this. 5 minus x equals negative 1 and 5 minus x equals positive 1. And if we solve this equation, we're going to subtract 5 from both sides. And solve for x, we get x equals a positive 6. So if this value is 6, let's plug it in and check it. 5 minus 6 is negative 1. The absolute value is positive 1, because absolute values are always positive. So if this quantity is negative 1, the absolute value of it is 1 unit from 0. If we look at this one and we go ahead and solve it, we're going to subtract 5 from both sides and then change the sign so we get x equals 4. If we plug that in, 5 minus 4 is a positive 1. The absolute value of positive 1 is, in fact, equal to 1. So that's what we find. We find the distance from 0. So when it comes to any absolute value equation, what we have to do is we have to isolate the absolute value solve it for two equations, one being the positive thing that could be in the absolute value and the negative quantity that could be in that absolute value. So let's do this example here. The first step is to isolate the absolute value, so I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. And now I can write two equations. One where the value inside is negative, and one where the value inside is positive. And now I can solve both of these equations, subtract 1 from both sides, divide by the coefficient, I get z equals 2. If I solve this one, subtract 1 from both sides, and divide by the coefficient, and I get z equals negative 1. Let's check these solutions and see if they hold true. If I put in 2, negative 2 times 2 is a negative 4. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. Positive 3 plus 6 is, in fact, 9, so that holds true. If I use negative 1, negative 1 times negative 2 is a positive 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. The absolute value of 3 is 3 plus 6 is 9. So both of these values hold true, so they are my solutions. Let's do one more example and see what happens here. Let's subtract 4 from both sides because our goal is to isolate the absolute value. Now, hopefully here, we intuitively see what's going on here. An absolute value, we should know that because it's dealing with a distance, distances are always positive. So our absolute value is always positive. If I look at this, this absolute value, regardless of what it is, equal to a negative, this should tell me this does not make sense for the reason that absolute values will never be negative. It will never equal a negative. So I can stop right here and say there is no solution. There is no value that's ever going to make an absolute value equal to negative 2. So I'm going to say no solution is my value. But what if I didn't recognize that? What if I worked through it and said, OK, I'm going to write my two equations? a minus 2 could equal the negative value, negative 2 in this case, and a minus 2 could equal the positive value. Let's change that sign, make it 2. And if I solve this, 
So add 2 to both sides, a could equal 0. Add 2 to both sides here, a could equal 4. Now what happens when I check these values? 0 minus 2 is negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. Positive 2 is not equal to negative 2. So this solution doesn't work. If I try 4, 4 minus 2 is 2. The absolute value of 2 is not equal to negative 2. Positive 2 is not equal to negative 2. So this one doesn't work either. So we can work through it. And as long as we check our answer, we're going to find out, hey, my solutions don't work. There is no solution. But we should recognize this. It'll save us that time and effort of working through these problems. All right. Let's do another example. If we look at this, our absolute value is already uh, set, set isolated. It's set equal to 0. If I write two equations in this case, I get x squared minus 9 equals positive 0. And I get x squared minus 9 equals negative 0. Well, they're actually the same equation, because this is the one and only time where we have a value 0 that's neither positive or negative, so it doesn't change. So in this case, I'm actually only looking for one solution. And that's where this equals 0, because plus 0 or minus 0 is the same thing. So I'm going to solve this, uh, add 9 to both sides. And then I can use our square root method to solve this, x equals plus or minus the square root of 9, which is 3. So x equals plus or minus 3. I can plug those values in to check that. 3 squared minus 9 is 0, 9 minus 9. Negative 3 squared is positive 9, minus 9 is 0. The absolute value of 0 is 0. So both of these work. My solutions is plus or minus 3. What about this one here? This one's a little bit more complicated, because if I write my two equations, x squared plus x could equal negative 12, but x squared plus x could also equal positive 12. The negative in here could be negative 12, because the absolute value of negative 12 is 12. And positive 12, its absolute value is also 12. So if we look at this, essentially what we have is two uh, trinomials that we need to solve. We set them equal to 0. x squared plus x plus 12 equals 0. And this factors. Does it factor? No, it does not factor. There are no factors of positive 12 that combine to give me 1. So maybe I use the quadratic formula. Or maybe we can use what we learned in a previous video, the discriminant. Let's use the discriminant here. I'm just going to say b squared, which is 1 squared plus, or excuse me, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 12, and determine, is this value greater than 0, less than 0, or equal to 0? Well, 1 minus this quantity is going to be a negative value. That tells me, because this is the discriminant, that this is an imaginary solution. Well, we're looking for real solutions. So this isn't going to result in anything real. And we use the discriminant. So that was good review from a previous video. If we look at this one here, x squared plus x minus 12 equals 0, this is going to give us some solutions. This is factorable, which is good news, to x plus 4, x minus 3 equals 0. So x could equal negative 4 or positive 3. Let's check these values in the original equation here. Negative 4 squared is 16 plus a negative 4, which would be 12. The absolute value of 12 is, in fact, 12. That's a true statement, so I know this works. If I try 3, 3 squared is 9 plus a positive 3 is 12. The absolute value of 12 is 12. So both of these solutions do work. We found two solutions to this absolute value equation. Now, what if we had absolute value inequalities? These are a good tie-in to the last lecture video that I've done. In section 1.5, we talked about absolute value, in e or excuse me, just inequalities. Well, now we're dealing with absolute value inequalities. Whenever we have an absolute value, we have to think two equations every time. Well, so what does this mean if it's less than? Well, if we have an absolute value is less than this, this is actually an and statement. It's saying we're looking for a distance that is less than 6. 
So if we're looking at a distance that's less than 6, it means the value of x has to be less than the distance between 0 and negative 6, because we're still dealing with absolute value, which is a distance. So <clears throat> what, when we have something like this, we have to write two equations. x could be less than 6 and, and that's the key, because less than tells us and, that's what it means, x is greater than negative 6. Now, why did I change the sign here? Well, if you recall from the previous video, when we change the sign of the value, we change the sign of the inequality. So what does that mean? If the absolute value of some number is less than that number, a is greater than 0, because absolute values can't be less than 0, this means we are looking for an intersection. And an intersection is the AND statement. That's what this means. It means we're looking for an intersection. All right, so let's look at it, some examples and see how we work these. Well, we have this absolute value. So x plus 7 could be less than or equal to 3. And x plus 7 could be greater than or equal to negative 3. If I change the sign, I remember to change the sign. Now I can solve these two inequalities, subtract 7 for both sides. x is less than or equal to negative 4. And subtract 7 from here x is greater than or equal to negative 10. And statements tell us to find a single interval. Let's go ahead and put these values on the number line. If this is negative 10 and this is negative 4, this says x is less than or equal to negative 4, so to the left of negative 4. And I used a bracket to indicate it includes the endpoint. Here, x is greater than or equal to negative 10. That's any value to the right, including negative 10 and to the right. And we see we have this single interval, an AND statement. What solves this value and this value simultaneously? So if we write this in interval notation, negative 10 to negative 4. AND statements can also be written as a compound inequality. Again, this is review from the previous section. Negative 4 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to, oh, putting it in the wrong order. I apologize. Negative 10 to negative 4. Notice we always write our compound inequalities from least value to greatest value. So there we have the solution, whether we put it in graphical notation, set, not or set notation, or interval notation. Let's take a look at this one for a moment. Now, initially we said absolute values can never be less than a negative. But the first thing we have to do is isolate this absolute value. Get it by itself. So I need to add 5 to both sides before I make that assessment. OK, well, now it's a positive value, and I can go ahead and solve this. 2a is less than 4 and, and I'm going to write the and in there, 2a is greater than negative 4, the two possibilities. So now we solve this. a is less than 2. I just divide both sides by 2. And a is greater than negative 2. Divide both sides by 2. What does this mean? Well, let's take this and write it as a compound inequality. I have negative 2 and positive 2. This says a is less than 2. a is less than 2. This says a is greater than 2. So it opens towards a. a is greater than negative 2. So we have negative 2 is less than a is less than 2. This is our set notation. Proper set notation, we put braces around it. Oh, and this would be a, because that's our variable, a such that negative 2 is less than a is less than 2. We can put that on our graph right here. If this is negative 2, this is positive 2, the endpoints are not included because this sign said it was just less than, and our interval is negative 2 to positive 2. An AND statement, a single interval. Well, what about this one? If we see that it's already isolated, we have an absolute value less than negative 1. Assess it first. It's isolated. Is an absolute value ever less than negative 1? No, absolute values are always positive, so they're never going to be less than 0. So that means they're never going to be less than negative 1. So we could stop here and say that this 
has no solution. There is no value of a that's going to make this less than zero. So it's not less than negative one. What if we have an absolute value being greater than a number? In the previous example, we had less than symbols. Well, this is a greater than symbol. It means that whatever x is, its distance from 0 is more than 6, greater than 6. Well, this distance on this side is also greater than 6 units from 0. So what does this mean when we have the absolute value greater than a, as long as a is a positive value? It means that we're looking for an or statement, which is a union. And we're going to end up using our union symbol between intervals. That's what this means. We're looking for union. So if you ever see greater than with an absolute value, an absolute value being greater than a number, you're actually looking for a union. We use the same process. Isolate the absolute value. In this case, it's already isolated. So I can write a plus 1 is greater than 4, or because of greater than, a plus 1 is less than negative 4. When I change the sign, I need to remember to change the sign. So let's solve this. a is greater than, subtract 1 from both sides, 3. Subtract 1 from both sides, a is less than negative 5. Now, because this is an or statement, I cannot write this as a compound inequality. But let's put it on a graph and see what we get. Here we have negative 5. Here we have positive 3. A is less than negative 5. That means any value to the left, but not including. And A is greater than 3, so any value to the right. We see two separate intervals. They don't overlap. So we have to unite them using our union symbol, because we want to know what solves this one or this one. And that's why we use that or statement. So we have negative infinity to negative 5, union. 3 to infinity, and everything has parentheses because this is not equal, so it doesn't include our endpoints. And because we have infinity, we can only use parentheses. Let's check. Let's see why this holds true. What if I pick a value in this interval? Let's say negative 6. Negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. The absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5. 5 is greater than 4. So this statement makes it true. Or let's pick a value from this val uh, interval. Let's choose 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. The absolute value of 5 is 5. 5 is greater than 4. This interval is also true. Anything in between there is going to make that a false statement. So what we have is this makes it true, or this makes it true. And that's why we call it an or statement. It solves one or the other. All right. <clears throat> The next, if you're following along in the notes at home, this is our next example. This is B. I want you to do this as your quiz. Try it for yourself. See if you understand it. If you want to wait, let's work on this one next. All right, we have the absolute value of some quantity greater than negative 5. Well, let's assess it. It's already isolated, so we can do the assessment. What do we know about absolute values? They're always positive. If this is a positive value, positive values are always greater than negative values. What does that mean? It, doesn't, it means whatever I put in here will be greater than negative 5. So that is a case where we have all reals. If we recall, when we had this example right here, an absolute value is never less than a negative, no solution. An absolute value is always greater than a negative any real number. So that would be the entire number line. In interval notation, negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, let's move over here and summarize everything we looked at. The summary of this entire section of equations, now all of our a's should be greater than 0. If they're not, we fall into those two cases we just looked at. If it's uh, less than, no solution if it's greater than all real numbers. But our equal sign, it just means that this is the distance from 0. If we have less than, we're looking at an AND statement. 
So x is greater than or, or greater than the negative a and less than the positive a. Our and statement gives us a single interval and we can write it as a compound uh, inequality. Here we have the absolute value of x greater than a. That means x is less than negative a or x is greater than a. And we see the two different intervals. And I didn't write it out, but we can put it in interval notation. Union, make sure you use that union symbol, a to infinity. And notice this cannot be written as a compound inequality because it wouldn't make a true statement. So there you have it. This has been section 1.6, equations containing absolute values and inequalities of absolute values. Thank you for watching.